In this lesson, we're going to talk about solving polynomial equations that are in quadratic form. So here's an example. x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 36 is equal to 0. Now let's find the value of x. Notice that the exponent of the first term is twice the value of the middle term. When you see that, it's in quadratic form. So we're going to factor by substitution. So let's pick a variable, let's say a. Let's set a equal to the middle variable, which is uh, x squared. So if a is x squared, then a squared is x to the fourth. So this is equivalent to a squared minus 13a plus 36, which we can factor. Two numbers that multiply to 36, but add to negative 13, are 9 negative 9, that is, and uh, negative 4. So therefore, we can see that a is equal to 9, and a is equal to 4. But before I do that, I want to factor it completely. So before solving for a, I'm going to replace a with x squared. So therefore, we have x squared minus 9, and x squared minus 4, which we could factor each of those expressions using the difference of perfect squares technique. So x squared minus 9 can be factored as x plus 3 and x minus 3. And x squared minus 4 is x plus 2 and x minus 2. So therefore, x is equal to negative 3, 3, negative 2, and 2. Here's another example. x plus 4 times the square root of x minus 12. Let's try that one. The square root of x is basically x to the 1 half. So we're going to set a equal to the middle variable, which is x to the 1 half, or square root x. So if a is equal to the square root x, that means a squared is x. So this is a squared plus 4a minus 12. Now, two numbers that multiply to negative 12, but add to positive 4, are positive 6 and negative 2. So it's going to be a plus 6 and a minus 2. Now this time, I'm going to solve for a. So a is equal to negative 6, and a is equal to positive 2. And a is the square root of x. Now the square root of x cannot equal a negative number. When you take the square root of something, it's just it's not going to work. The square root of 36 is positive 6, and the square root of negative 36 is 6i. There's no x value that we can use that's going to give us negative 6, so this one is just not going to work. Now, for this one, we can square both sides. So x is equal to 4. The square root of 4 is 2, and so that's the solution for this problem. Here's the next example. x to the minus 2 minus x raised to the minus 1 minus 6 is equal to 0. Try that one. So let's set the middle term equal to a, which means that x to the negative 2 is a squared. So this is a squared minus a minus 6. Two numbers that multiply to negative 6 but add to negative 1 is uh, negative 3 and positive 2. So it's going to be a minus 3 times a plus 2. So a is equal to 3, and a is equal to negative 2. And a is x to the minus 1, which x to the minus 1 is 1 over x. So to solve for x, let's raise both numbers to the minus 1 power. 1 over x raised to the negative 1, basically the fraction flips. It becomes x. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. So if 1 over x is negative 2, x is going to be negative 1 over 2. So we have two answers, negative 1 half and positive 1 over 3. Number 4, x raised to the 2 over 3 minus 2x to the 1 third minus 8. So this time, let's set a equal to x to the 1 third, which means that a squared 
is x raised to the 2 thirds. So this is going to be a squared minus 2a minus 8. So two numbers that multiply to negative 8 but add to negative 2. This is going to be negative 4 and positive 2. So the factor is going to be a minus 4 times a plus 2, which means that a is equal to 4 and a is equal to negative 2. So x to the 1 third, which is the cube root of x, that's equal to 4 and negative 2. So to solve for x, we need to raise both sides to the third power. On the left, it's just going to be x. The threes will cancel. 4 to the third is 64. Now let's do the same for the other expression. Negative 2 to the third power. That's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 three times. Uh, that's going to be negative 8. And so that's the solution. Positive 64 and negative 8. Let's try this one. x to the eighth minus 20x to the fourth plus 64. So let's set a equal to x to the fourth which means that a squared is x to the eighth. So we have uh, a squared minus 20a plus 64. So two numbers that multiply to 64 but add to negative 20 are 16 and 4, both negative. So it's a minus 16 and a minus 4. Because a is equal to a larger x value, or an x value with a, a high exponent, I'm going to replace a at this point because I can factor everything further. Let's replace a with x to the fourth. Now we can use the difference of perfect squares technique. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. And the square root of 16 is 4. And one of them is going to be positive and the other will be negative. Now we can factor x to the fourth minus 4. It's going to be x squared minus 2 and x squared plus 2. Now we can't factor x squared plus 4, but we can factor x squared minus 4. That's x plus 2 and x minus 2. We can also factor x squared minus 2, but we're just going to get a radical. It's going to be x plus root 2, x minus root 2. We can't factor a sum of squares, so we cannot factor these two. If we do factor it, it's going to be imaginary numbers. If you do factor it, it's going to be like x plus 2i and x minus 2i. But I'm not going to do that. So here are the real solutions. Negative 2, 2, negative root 2, and positive root 2. So those are all the real number solutions. Now, if you want the imaginary solutions, it's going to be plus or minus 2i and also plus or minus square root 2i. So there's a total of eight solutions because the exponent is eight. Four of them are real and four of them are imaginary. Let's try one more example. X squared minus seven squared minus three times X squared minus seven plus two. And let's say that's equal to zero. So we're going to set the middle part equal to a. So a, actually let me write it here. a is equal to x squared minus 7, which means that a squared is equal to x squared minus 7 squared. So what we have is a squared minus 3a plus 2. So two numbers that multiply to 2 but add to negative 3 are negative 2 and negative 1. So to factor, it's going to be a minus 2 times a minus 1. So therefore, a is equal to 2 and a is equal to 1, which means that x squared minus 7 is equal to 2 and x squared minus 7 is equal to 1. So let's focus on this equation. Let's add 7 to both sides. 2 plus 7 is 9, and if we take the square root of both sides, we can see that x is plus or minus 3. And for this one, x squared is equal to 8. 
So therefore, x is plus or minus the square root of 8, which we can reduce it. 8 is 4 times 2. The square root of 4 is 2. So x is equal to plus or minus 2 root 2 and plus or minus 3.